big and it's got written Sanhedrin Daf Kaf Ches all over it. Uh, more, more seriously, for those who pine for the days of the Obamas with all the relationships, we'll make you very happy today. Okay, so we've been dealing we've been dealing with the questions of uh, whether a um, who who qualifies as a karo. So someone who is uh, people who are relatives can't testify about each other. They can't testify together with each other, and they can't testify uh, and they can't act as judges. Uh, in the same matter. So we've been walking through and what we did already in the Gemara yesterday was we discussed how we knew uh, that two sets of fathers or two sets of sons could not uh, testify about each other. So we learned that a uh, uh, an uncle and his nephew uh, could not testify. So now we're going to say Ashkechan Avos and included in that obviously is a father and son. So at the top of Daf Chav Ches, we're going to say Ashkechan Avos Lebanim Ubanim Laavos. So we now know a father and a son. A father can't testify about a son, and a son can't testify about a father, and that also includes an uncle and a nephew. The Kosher Kain Avos LaHadavi, and obviously included in that when you say Avos Ubanim, if you say the Avos refers to two brothers. So if in other words, what the Gemara is saying is the Kosher Kain is as follows: If I can't testify about my uncle, which we've learned. It would have to be why because he's my father's brother. So then, obviously, I can't testify about my father because if I'm if I can't testify about the uncle because he's my father's brother, I sure, then I surely can't testify about my father. So we say the kosher again, avos la So we now know uh, we now know you can't testify about your father or your uncle. Banim libanim minolan. But where do I know that in our little graph here we have two fathers and two sons? So how do we know that the two sons can't testify about each other, i.e., cousins? How do we know that cousins can't testify about each other? The Gemara says, Im Kain licht of lo yumsu avos al bain. Right? So we learned avos plural to understand that there's two people at the top level, two brothers and a son. So that means the uncle nephew relationship is there. But it doesn't need to say banim. It could just say lo yumsu avos, plural two fathers, meaning brothers, albain, and that would be his nephew. So my banim. So why does it say banim plural? Uh, to tell you that filu banim lahadadi. To tell you that even cousins. So in other words, it's plural avos to tell you that there's a father and a brother, and it's plural banim to tell you that beneath them is each a son, and they're uh, and and, it, and they're carved to each other. So therefore, we learn cousins as well. Second cousins, third cousins. No, no, no. We're gonna get we're gonna get into those details now. So for right now, we're 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 trying to take it a step at a time. So we've now figured out fathers, uncles, brothers, cousins. That's where we're up to. Ashkechan banim la dadi, banim la almo minolans. So now we're gonna shift off for the moment, talking about the relationships, and just say had and as I referenced before that they can't crow them, relatives can't testify about each other, and they can't be witnesses together. So now the Gemara is going to try and say that, banim la, da, uh, la How do I know that crow them can't, uh, can't test, uh, how do I know that they can't testify together? Um, so he says as follows, Amarami Barchama, Svarahu. It's a, you know, I'll tell you a, a logical reason, or a, an inf- uh, you know an, an inference, Kedisanya, like we learned in Abraisa, so the halacha is, as we know, is that if someone comes, you have two witnesses who come and testify about something. Some Two other witnesses come along and say, it's not possible that you could testify about this because you were with us in Chicago at that time, and you couldn't have been in Baltimore to watch that happen, right? So the halacha is that whatever they wanted to have happen happens to them, right? So now the question is, in order to become zomimim, you have to actually prove that both of them are zomimim. Let's say two witnesses, Reuven and Shimon, testify about something that happened in Baltimore, and other witnesses come along and say, Reuven, you were with us in Chicago. That doesn't make them into zomimim. They both have to become zomimim, right? And if you're going to tell me that you think that relatives can testify together with each other, Nimta eight zomam nerek be edis achiv. You're gonna find that an eight zomam will be killed by the edis of his brother. Why? Because what we're saying is that if 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 one brother who's found a zomam, if, if if one witness has found a zomam cannot be uh, cannot be found cannot be turned into an eight zomam that you do to him what he wanted to do unless his other witness testified together with him and became a zomam. 
So what do you see? That if brothers, for example, could testify together, the only way they could become Zomamim, and any witnesses have to be capable of becoming Zomamim, that's a requirement of, of testimony. So therefore, what's going to happen? If you had two brothers, it would turn out that individually they cannot become Zomamim. The only way they can become Zomamim is together with their brother. And then if together with their brother, they now become Zomamim, it works out that the one brother is causing the other brother to get killed. If let's say they testified in a capital case. And yet we learned that relatives can't get killed on the sins of each other. Uh, 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 they can't get, they can't testify about each other. So the Gemara is saying that it's a Svara, obviously two brothers or two relatives can't testify together because by enabling the other one to become an eight Zomim and thereby get killed, their testimony is allowing or causing their brother to get killed. So that's the Svara. Um, like, Rava, Rava doesn't like this. According to your reason. So what do we say here? We say it must be two brothers can't be witnesses because witnesses have to be able to cause each other to get killed in a Zomim context. But this is what we learned in the Mishnah. Okay, what's the case here? So we know. We've been discussing it in Baba Basar Council. We've been discussing it in, in Sanhedrin as well. The idea of Chazaka. So if I buy a field from someone and it's been more than three years, I'm not requ- I'm not required to save the star, but rather how could I prove that it was that I bought it? Is I bring witnesses that I uh, uh, first of all I have to make a claim that I bought it, so I do that, and then I bring witnesses that I used the land for three years. That's a classic case of Chazaka. So what happened in this case that they didn't have they didn't have one set of witnesses who could say I used it for three years, but what happened? You had three brothers each of whom uh, watched me, witnessed me being in the property for one year. And then there's a, a, a separate individual who happened to watch me all three years. So what happens? You have Reuben, Shimon, and Levi, three brothers, together with uh, Zvulun. So Zvulun and Reuben testify about year one. Zvulun and Shimon testify about year two. And Zvulun and, Sh- and Levi testify about year three. So the Gemara, the, the Mishnah says, So this is, this is considered three separate set of atheists. These are three testimonies. So therefore, year one has a pair of witnesses, year two has a pair of witnesses, and year three has a pair of witnesses, right? So therefore, even though there are relatives, there are three brothers testifying here, since each is testifying in a different, uh, in a different instance of testimony, so then therefore, they're not considered Kroven to each other because none of them is testifying together with their brother. And so that works, and that works to call a chazaka. But the Mishnah says the Hain Edus Hazama. But they all there it's it's considered one Edus for purposes of Hazama, meaning because the only way that you could the only way that you could uh that you could make them be Zomamim is if you disprove all of the witnesses. In order to do that, you have to disprove the three brothers plus Zulun, right? So therefore they're saying that that testimony works and they're not lumped together for purposes of each year's testimony, but in the aggregate, in order to make them Zomimim, you would need all of them. You would need all of them. So what is he saying? Nimsa eight Zomim, Mishalim, Mamam, Be'edis, Achiv. So what do you see? You see that, and, and we assume that money and, and, and capital cases are similar, as we'll see in the minute in the Gemara. But so what do you see? You see that, it, that, it, that it's possible to give them hazama, right? Because it's saying that they become one unit for purposes of hazama. You need to disprove all four, but you can disprove all four. Now, according to the cheshmin you made, that if two brothers could be zomamim, that by testifying together, they are enabling hazama, and therefore they're causing their brother to get killed or to owe money, right? So you were saying in theory, in other words, the way the first terrorist, uh, Rami Bar his theory was if you would have two brothers, and in order to make each other Zomim, they have to rely on their other's testimony. So that can't work because then you're killing them on the basis of their brother. But yet we see a Mishnah that tells us explicitly that three brothers together can have Hazama, even though none of them could be found to be Adam Zomim unless the other one testifies. So you see the testimony of one is not an impediment to the, to the other one becoming an Eid Zomim. So the Svara of Rami Bar doesn't work. So Ella, so rather, how do you explain why the three plus one, Reuben, Shimon, and Levi plus Zulun can become Zomimim? Because Hazama may alma ka'asi. Because the Hazama making them into Edim Zomimim is not coming from the fact that they each testify about each other. 
It's coming from the fact that Reuven, Shimon, Levi, and Zvulun testified, and two others, uh, two others, Don and Naftali, come along and say that they were that they were Zomamim because they were in Chicago. So Don and Naftali are the ones who are creating Zomamim. The brothers aren't creating Zomamim for themselves. So that's how the case works with the three. So therefore, in Rami Bar Chama's case also, the two brothers, even though it's true that they can't become Zomamim unless they each testify, but their, each of their testimony is not causing their brother to become an Zomamim. Their brother is being caused to become an Zomamim by external witnesses. So that's not a good raya. So we're back to our question. How do we know that two brothers, for example, cannot testify together? Forget about each other. How do we know they can't testify together about someone else? Ella, the, the Gemara says, we're going to learn it from the Pasuk. In Cain, lift of, lift of Kra, Ubein al Avos, Inami Haim al Avos. So what is it saying? So we darshan before, so it says, uh, it says, Lo Yumsu Avos al Banim, Lo Yumsu Banim al Avos, right? So we already darshan Lo Yumsu av, av, Avos al Banim, we darshan the Banim before to tell us cousins. But then when it says the next part, the, the Basa continues, it says, Ubanim al Avos, why not just say Ubain al Avos? From the fact that it says Banim, um, it, it, so let it just say Bain al Avos, or just say Haim al Avos. So you could say, Lo Yumsu Avos al Banim, oh Haim al, al, al Banim, uh, oh, oh Haim al Avos, right? So therefore, we have an extra word of Banim, my Ubanim. So when, when it says the extra word ubanim, afilu banim la almor, it's coming to tell us that and as we had one banim comes to tell us cousins, and the other banim comes to tell us that that uh, that two uh, that two brothers, uh, uh, two I'm sorry, two two relatives uh, cannot testify together. Okay, so the Gemara says ashkechan krovea aim krovea av krovea aim minolam. So everything. Uh, so when we said lo yomsu avos albanim. It's saying fathers, which means two brothers, the uncles, and the two cousins should not uh, should not die for each other. So therefore, they, they cannot be witnesses against each other, and they're considered krovim. But that only tells me a father and his son, a father and his brother, a father and his nephew, but those are all relatives of the father. How do I know relatives of the mother? Amar Kra, the Pasuk says, avos, avos, tre zimni, that it says, uh, uh, it says fathers twice. So what could it have said? It could have said, Lo yumsu avos abanim vehem ubanim abanim bahem. Right? So it could have said that, uh, why did it have to say avos twice? So we have an extra word avos. Im eno inyan the krove av, teneu inyan the krove aim. So we know the, the concept of an im eno inyan is if we have an extra word that's not needed within the context it's in, you can use it for a parallel context. And therefore, we have an extra word, avos, and it's telling us to come to include not just relatives of the father, but also relatives of the mother. So that's how our Mishnah, which included many relatives of the mother, knows it. Okay? So the Gemara says, So we've been talking about lo yumsu avos abanim, that fathers should not die because of the sons, right? So that's talking about where that, that a father should not be able to give bad testimony about his son or his brother or his nephew, right? And vice versa. But that's talking about bad testimony. How do I know that I can't give good testimony about my brother, for example? So Amar Kra, Yumsu, Yumsu, Trey Zimni. It says that they will die, um, that, that, that it used the word Yumsu, that lo Yumsu avos habanim, Ubanim lo yumsu al avos, right? So why does it, it, it? Why not just say ubanim al avos? Why do you have to say yumsu a second time that they'll die? So therefore, uh, it, it says it says that they'll die twice, which tells you chova twice. But we don't need it twice to tell you that you can that you can't testify testify badly about a relative. So meino inyan lechova teneyo inyan lezchos. So if we're not if we if we have an extra word yumsu that they'll die because we already the first one tells us that you can't testify negatively against the relative, so then the second one comes to tell you that you can't testify positively about a relative either. Okay? So we've we've learned a case where we, we've understood that a father can't testify about a son positively or negatively in a capital case because it says that they shouldn't die. That's obviously where, do you, where does someone get killed? Only in a capital case. But how do I know in a monetary case? That they're also relatives can't testify about each other. 
Amar Kra, because the Pasuk says, the Pasuk in, uh, in Vayikra, it says, Mishpat Echad Yeh Lachem, that there should be one law for them, Mishpat HaShav Lachem, uh, uh, the law that uh, that is even to them, meaning whether it is Dine Mamanos or Dine Nefashis, whether it's monetary or capital. Where do we know this from? So Tosfus on Daf Beis Amun Beis explains this, uh, where he says as follows, that... Um, because that uh, cried the leal cried the ksiv. Because in front of this pasuk, it's written maka behema yishameno umake adam yumas. The pasuk says that someone who hits or kills a behema should pay. So that's monetary matters. Umake adam yumas, and a person who kills another person should die. So that's 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 a uh, that's capital matters. And immediately afterwards, it's written mishpat echad yelahem. So you see that the Torah references monetary. Then it references uh, the capital, and then it says you should have an even law. So this tells you that just like just like a, a, a father can't testify about a son, or relatives can't testify each other in capital cases, so too they can't testify about each other in monetary matters. Okay, here's where the fun starts. I'm a Rav. Achi Abba lo yaid li. The Rav says, Achi Abba, my uncle, the, the brother of my father, lo yaid li. He can't testify about me because he's because I'm his nephew. Who <coughs> he can't testify? Ubino and his son, Vichosno and his son-in-law. And then he continues and says, Afani lo oyed lo. I can't testify about my uncle. Ani me ubni vichosni and my son and my son-in-law. Okay, so uh, he's saying. So so what's the problem with this? The problem is. Why should that be true? Havile shlishi berishon. This is a shlishi berishon. So what is it? Well, let, let's just say how the Gemara is going to work here. That the, the, the Gemara is going to count people at different generational levels. So to say that two brothers can't testify about each other, they're a first generation to first generation testimony. To say two cousins can't testify about each other, and this is where we're going to get to your point, Adam. The, the, the two, to say two cousins can't, test, can't testify about each other is a second to a second. To say that an uncle can't testify on a nephew is a first to a second. To say a nephew can't testify on an uncle is a second to a first, right? So basically, the, what the Gemara is going to ask here is as follows. According to what Rav said, he says, you're prohibiting a third generation to testify about a first generation. Why? Because Rav said, not only can I not testify about my uncle, so that's a two to one, my son or son-in-law cannot testify about my uncle either. So what are they? That's a three to one, right? A third generation, Rav's son testifying about Rav's uncle is saying that a third generation cannot testify about a first generation, okay? So now, the, what's the problem with that? Vanan sheni b'sheni, tanan sheni b'rishon tanan. But in our Mishnah, we only learned instances of nephew to uncle, uncle to nephew, which is two to one, one to two, or we learned cousins, two to two, right? Or any of the cases we learned about someone who is a relative and and their son, right? All of those are at, at best one generational level separated from each other. So there's a lot of two to twos, a lot of two to ones, one to twos, etc. So, but now Rav is introducing Shlishi Barishon Lo Tanan. Rav's introducing that a third generation cannot, gener- cannot testify about a first generation. We don't see that anywhere in our Mishnah. So the Gemara answers, it says, yes, we actually do see it in our Mishnah. Man chasno de katani b'masnisen, chasan b'no. He says, we learned lots of third generations in our Mishnah. Why? Because the Mishnah listed a, 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 a series of people. And then what did it say? It said, heim, heim, them, the people I mentioned, uben nehen, and their sons, v'chos nehen, which we were understanding. For example, in Rav's case, Rav was saying, my son and my son-in-law, right, so those those are those are just one those are just one generation removed. The way we're understanding the mission now is that it says Heinu Bnaim Vachosnayan is actually saying three generations. It's saying, I can't testify about them, I can't testify about their son, and I can't testify about their son's son-in-law, right? So we're now adding a generation. If you do that, then understand the son-in-law is a reference not to the father's son-in-law, but to the father's son's son-in-law so now you've added a third generation so we say it's not a problem that rav says third generation to first generation are krovim are relatives because our mishnah by saying chasnei and also includes it 
So the Gemara says, if you're telling me that the purpose was to come and tell me that the third generation is us or in the first generation, so why are you telling me, me, my son, and my son's son-in-law? Let's just make life easier. Say me, my son, my grandson, right? Like, wh- wh- why are you messing around with me, my son, and my son's son-in-law? So the Gemara says, well, listen to Ben Beno. So the Gemara answers, no, because Milsa Agav Orcha Kamash Malan, by saying, instead of saying me, my son, and my grandson, by saying me, my son, and my son's son-in-law, you're teaching a concept that Baal Ki Ishto, that a husband and wife are equal. So meaning just like, and we saw this already with other things in the Mishnah. We talked about the fact that the first three cases of the Mishnah parallel the second three cases of the Mishnah because it adds in the, the, uh, the, 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 and our, the, the wife. So and just like I can't, I can't, uh, can't testify about my father's brother. I can't testify about my father's sister's husband, right? But our, so this is the, the Mishnah is showing this to us by saying me, my son, and my son's son-in-law is the same as saying me, my son, and my grandson. But it's teaching you the extra thing that not just my grandson, but also his, his uh, not just my grandson, but also my granddaughter, not just my granddaughter, but also my granddaughter's husband, which is the grandson. Okay. So the Gemara says, well, I still have a problem. Well, all the Tani Ruchia learned as follows. Shmona Avos, there are listed in our Mishnah eight primary uh, eight primary people. Shehain Esen Barbo, which is really 24. So that's Ruchia's thing. Why? Now, really, in our Mishnah, there's 10 people mentioned. But we're going to ignore the last two, which is his Giso, which is his brother-in-law, his wife's sister's uh, husband, right? as well as the stepson. Now, why Rukhia ignores that, we're going to end up talking about later in the Gemara. But what do we have? We have a brother, a paternal uncle, a maternal uncle, a brother-in-law, a paternal uncle by marriage, a maternal uncle by marriage, and a stepfather. So we have eight eight people listed in our Mishnah. Shehain, Esr, Varba, which are really 24. Why? Because each of them is the principal, and the principal's son, and the principal's son-in-law, right? So therefore, the eight is really 24, because you have eight plus eight plus eight, right? Now the Gemara is saying, if you're right that it goes down to the third generation, then Hani Tlosim Vatartin have it. You should be 32, because you have the principal, their son, their son-in-laws, and their grandsons, right? So now you're going to end up with 32. But yet, Reb says, now... You might ask yourself, it should be 40 because it's the son-in-law's sons and the son's sons. But uh, Rashi says that that once it's taught us the point about chasnos by showing the son and the son-in-law, it doesn't need to prove the point again. So that wouldn't be 40, but it'd be 32. And Ruchia says there's eight principles and two added people. But if you're adding a third generation, it's three added people and there should be 32 total, not 24. So therefore, we cannot learn that chasnehen, that sons-in-law, means the son's son-in-law, because then you would you would need 32. So rather, how are we going to answer why Rav Asers a third generation to first generation and says there's a karo, even though our Mishnah seems to only do two to one or two to two? So the Gemara says, Eliolam chasno mamish. When it says chasnayan, it means their son-in-law. The Amai karile chasan chasan beno, kivon de me'ama ka'asu. Okay, so he says, so really, Rav's going to tell you the Mishnah itself only says a, a, a father and a son, a, 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 a principal or a primary person and a son and his son-in-law. But that's as good as saying a, 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 a principal and his son and his grandson. Why? Because when, because since it includes the, the son-in-law, right, on the second level, meaning a man, his son, his son-in-law. But here's the deal. His son-in-law is a step removed from him, from the man himself. Why? Because it's the man, his daughter, his, and therefore his son-in-law, right? So if you want to think about it that way, you have the man is generation level one. You have his his daughter is generation level two. Her, his daughter's husband is generation level three, right? So now you see in the Mishnah a three to one. So even though this three is on the second generational level, but there was a hop to get there. So you go first, second, third, okay? So therefore, they were answering that, where did Rob get the idea that a three to one is a karov from this measure? Therefore, you may, it's the same thing if you have a man, a, a man, his son, and his grandson are also a three to one. And that's really what Rob said. Rob said, neither I nor my son or son-in-law can testify about my uncle because 
<coughs> now Rashi points out you could ask that according to this, a, a son-in-law, when Rav says his son-in-law can't testify about his uncle, you should say that that's a four to one and they should be permitted. But Rashi says we have a better question, so we don't have to ask that question. So, but but this is basically what we're saying now, according to Rav, is because you have one, two, three, you see three to one doesn't work, and therefore it's not going to work one, two, three either in a row. So the uh, the Gemara says that's a little hard for people on the microphone who can't see me pointing, but okay. El Eliolam Chasan Mamish Ramai Karle Chasan Chasan Beno. Why does Rav refer to him as the son-in-law of his son? Kima the Me'alma Kasi. Since uh, a, a son-in-law is from out there, he's not, he's not my daughter. Kedar Acher Dami, it's as if he's a third generation, and therefore that's how Rav knows third generation to one. So the Gemara says, So if you're telling me that, that, a, uh, that, that, that Rav is saying, um, I'm sorry, uh, okay, so now what we're saying is that when Rav says, I can't testify uh, about my, uh, 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 I'm sorry, my, my son cannot testify about my uncle or his son or son-in-law, right? So then my, Rav's, Rav's son is a third, right? Uh, who's then, who's then testifying, I'm, I'm sorry, so then, okay, I'm sorry, the other way around. So Rav is, Rav is saying that, that my uncle, I can't testify about my uncle, or his son, or his son-in-law. So now we're saying Rav to his uncle is a two to one. Rav to his cousin is a two to two. Rav to his female cousin's husband is a two to three, right? Makes sense? So we have we have Rav to his uncle, two to one. Rav to his uncle's son, two to two, his cousin. Rav to his uncle's daughter's husband, his son-in-law, his uncle's son-in-law is a two to three. So now we're saying that if you if you understand that a son-in-law creates a new generational level, even though he's still on that second generation, but because there's a hop, so what do you have? You have Rob saying that I can't testify about my cousin-in-law, which is a two to three. So what's the big deal if you understand Rob to be saying two to three? Because you have a third generation that's a car up to a second generation, but Rob actually Shlishi but Rob himself holds that a shlishi can testify about a shani. How do we know that Rav holds that a shlishi can testify about a shani? Because Rav said, my son or son-in-law, who is a, a, a third, cannot testify about my uncle, right? So Rav was saying, my, I, and ours, my uncle to me is a, is a one to two. My uncle to my son or my son-in-law is a one to three, right? So Rav is saying, a, 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 or let's look at it the other way, three to one. My son cannot testify about my uncle. So Rav is saying three to one is prohibited. But the implication would be that my, that my son can testify about my uncle's son because he doesn't preclude that. He only testifies <laughs> testifying about my uncle. So what do you see? You see that Rav holds that a three to two relationship is okay, right? So if Rav himself says that a three to two relationship is okay because Rav's son can testify about his uncle's son, which is a three to two, then how can you tell me that Rav cannot testify about his uncle's son-in-law because that's a three to two? Rav himself says three to two is fine. The inference is just because he doesn't exclude it? Yes. In other words, he's, he, he was listing all the people that they can't testify about, but he didn't say that his son-in-law or his son can't testify about his uncle's son. So it must be Rav holds three to two is okay. But the way you were explaining Rav, that Rav can't testify about his cousin-in-law is saying that Rav considers a three to two too close to be able to testify together. So we need a new answer. El Arav Damakurvilazar. But rather, we're going to say that Rav, the reason he says three to one is Usr, is too close, is a karo, but our Mishnah doesn't say it, is because Rav is going like the opinion of Rebbe Lazar, not like the opinion of our Mishnah. The Sanya, because we learned in a Brisa, Rebbe Lazar, Amin Rebbe Lazar says, Kishem Sha'achi Abba Lo Yoidli Hu Ubno Chosno. Just like, so now we're saying, forget this idea that a son-in-law is an additional step removed. But what we're going to say as follows, just like my uncle cannot testify for me, nor can his son or son-in-law, so that, that's the regular relationship, is saying, I cannot testify about my uncle, which is two to one. I cannot testify about my uncle's son or son's-in-law, which is two to two, which we know from the Mishnah. But Rabbi Lezer continues and says, Kach ben achi lo yo'idli hu He's saying, not only 
can I can I not testify about my first cousin, meaning my uncle's my uncle's son, right? So not only can I not testify about him, I can't testify about my first cousin's son. So what does that become? That becomes a uh, Rabbi Elazar is very clearly saying that a two cannot testify to a three because I cannot testify to my uncle's son's son. So I'm a, 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 I'm Rav is a second, and he's saying going back up, saying that I can't testify about my uncle who's the first, I can't testify about my cousin who's the second, and I can't testify about my cousin's son who's the third. So you see that Rabbi Lazar does hold that three to two is too close. And that's who Rav was saying like. So it, in fact, does not fit with our Mishnah. Our Mishnah only discusses two to two or two to one or one to two. It doesn't discuss three to two. Okay? So the Gemara says, Yakati have a shlishi b'sheni, but Rav actually shlishi b'sheni. He says, but I still have a problem. You're telling me that Rav holds like Rabbi Elazar, and Rabbi Elazar says three to two is too close, and that's a karov. But we just demonstrated a minute ago that Rav himself holds that three to two is acceptable. And Rabbi Lazar says that a three to two is not acceptable. So how can you say Rav holds like Rabbi Lazar and that's how you explain Rav. Rav says three to two is good and Rabbi Lazar says it's not. So the Gemara says, Rav says, that uh, uh, Rav agrees with Rabbi Lazar that a three to one is too close and prohibited, but he does not go as far as Rabbi Lazar, who Rabbi Lazar says a three to two is prohibited. Rav says, I don't go that far. I, I, I go with Rabbi Lazar on the first jump but I don't go another jump. So three to one, I say, is bad. Three to two is already too far, and they're not considered relatives. My time at the Rav. Why does Rav say three to one is author? So I'm a crook, because the Pasuk says, Lo to all habanim, that fathers shouldn't die for sons. And the Pasuk continues, U banim, lo yom to all abos, right? But it has, it has a vav there, right? So it adds the word vav. Uh, so when it, so therefore, you could read, how could you read the Pasuk? Lo yom to avos abanim u banim that a father should not die on son or grandson, right? So therefore, that once once I know that, that in other words, he's adding a generation. So our Mishnah held that lo yomsu avos banim includes cousins. When it says banim u banim, according to Rav, that adds another generation. And I, I, I'm, I'm sorry, so, there, uh, so therefore, no, I'm, I'm sorry. He's saying, he's saying that, he's just saying a three to one. He's saying, I can't testify about my uncle or his son or his son's son. So you see a one, uh, uh, you see that a, a person cannot testify about his brother, his brother's son or his brother's grandson. So it's, it's a three to one. Um, to add one more generation. So our mission was two to two uh, or two to one. Rav adds three to one. Rebel Lazar, why does Rebel Lazar say even three to two? Al-Banim Amrachmana Sule the Avos Shadi Abanim. Because you see he, First of all, Rebbe Lazar agrees with Rav's cheshbin of banim ubanim. So that's how he gets the three to one. And then when the Pasuk says, Lyumsu avos al banim, instead of saying, for example, al pi banim, which would be clearer. So whether the fact that it says this language of al is showing you that you should throw that the psule avos, that the, 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 the psul of the fathers should be on the sons. And therefore, he's adding another generation. So Rav grew from banim ubanim, that three to one, which is one generation more than our Mishnah. Rabbi Lazar says, I first of all take that banim ubanim to add a generation, but then I also take al banim to add another generation. And that's how Rabbi Lazar gets the three to two. Okay, Omar Reb Nachman. So those who are good at spatial relations will now uh, uh, understand uh, Reb Nachman very well. Um, I found this complicated. Rashi evidently didn't because Rashi has like a teeny tiny bit on this whole thing and <laughs> says it very short. But okay, Omar Reb Nachman. Reb Nachman says, Ani chamo- uh, I'm sorry, Achi chamosi lo yaidli. That the brother of my father-in-law can't testify for me. That's statement number one. Ben Achi Chamosi, the son of the brother of my father-in-law, Lo Yaidli, can't testify for me. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry, mother-in-law. I'm sorry, you're right. So I'm sorry. So it's Achi Chamosi Lo Yaidli that he says the brother of my mother-in-law can't testify for me. Ben Achi Chamosi Lo Yaidli, the son of the brother of my mother-in-law can't testify for me. Ben Achos Chamosi Lo Yaidli, the son of the sister of my mother-in-law, can't testify for me. So Rav Nachman made three statements, which sound unique, but they're not, because the Gemara says Vatani Tuna. We actually learned it in our Mishnah, where because our Mishnah said Bal Achoso that the husband of his sister Ubal Achos Aviv and the husband of the sister of his father Ubal Achos Imo Hain Uvneim 
mechasneim. So our mission said that. So how how does that show that it was covered? So let's take it one case at a time. That it says achi chamosi lo the brother of my mother-in-law cannot testify for me, right? So how does our Mishnah say it? Because our Mishnah says, the Baal Achoso, which is, as it says, the, the husband of my sister is who? Is my brother-in-law. And and so, uh, the, the I'm sorry, the, the the husband of my sister. So what did you have in Reb Nachman's case? Reb Nachman said, I'm here. I have my mother-in-law and I have my mother-in-law's brother, right? And he's saying that the mother-in-law's brother cannot testify about me. So me, my mother-in-law, my mother-in-law's brother. But if you want to start from the brother, the brother is saying the brother's sister is who the mother-in-law, who is married to a husband, whose son is uh, whose son-in-law is Reb Nachman. And so therefore, you have a brother's sister's husband's son-in-law, right? So it's the same thing. So when you say it's just the reverse, so Rav Nachman is saying my mother-in-law's brother. If you start from the brother, you're saying the brother. You're saying someone's sister's husband's son-in-law, even though it's her son-in-law too. But in our since we're discussing men, so it goes a step out, and so it's the same case. And now same thing comes next. So now we say the the son of the brother of my mother-in-law can testify. So you're having Rav Nachman with his mother-in-law above him, the brother of the mother-in-law. And then the son, right? So our Mishnah though says the Baal Achos Aviv and his son-in-law. So now let's think about this. Start from the son. So we have Amnachman, mother-in-law, brother, son. Start from the son. The son is saying, My father is the brother of the mother-in-law, right? So my father's sister, that's the mother-in-law, my father's sister's husband, right? So we've now jumped to the husband. His son-in-law is back to Amnachman. Okay? So that's why case number two is really included in our Mishnah. Now, what was case number three that Rav Nachman said? Ben Achos Chamosi Lo Yaidli. The son of the sister of my mother-in-law can't testify for me. How did we see that in the Mishnah? Because the Mishnah said, Baal Achos. So what do you have here? You have Rav Nachman. You have a mother-in-law on top of him. You have a sister of the mother-in-law. And you have the son. Now, the Mishnah said, Baal Achos Imi and their son-in-law. So now, if I start from the son, I say, Imi is my mother's. So that's the generation above. Uh, Baal of my, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, that the uh, Baal Achos Imi, that the, the so, I'm sorry, so the, the sister of my mother is the mother-in-law. The husband of the sister of, uh, of my mother is the, is, is the father-in-law. And the father-in-law's son-in-law is included. That's Reb Nachman. So you see that Reb Nachman said three cases, but all he was doing was he was starting from the son-in-law while our Mishnah was starting from in the latter two cases, the, the, the son over here, or in the first case, the brother of the mother-in-law. So you're saying all of this is really included. Um, so these are the halachas of Reb Nachman. Am Reb Ashi, ki avinan be'ula, when we were by Ula, Iboilan, he asked us as follows, achi chamav mahu, the brother of his father-in-law. So you have the person, you have the father-in-law, and you have the brother. What's the halacha? Ben Achi Chamav, the son of the brother of the father-in-law, Mahu Wasalacha. Ben Achos Chamav, the son of the sister of the father-in-law, Mahu Wasalacha. So the Rav Shesh has asked these three cases. Amrlan said to us, Tenisuha. Uh, uh, so Ula answered because he said they were they were they were by uh, by Ula. Ula answered Tenisuha. We already learned it in the Mishnah because our Mishnah said Achiv Vachi Aviv. Vachi imo hein ubneim chasneim, right? So therefore, the the uh, the the Mishnah says that someone's brother and the son-in-law, right? So therefore, when we said the first question that Rav Sheshis asked about was, you have a person, you have his father-in-law, and you have his brother. So if you start from brother, we know that we're saying that this guy has a brother. Who's that? The father-in-law, and we know that his brother's son-in-law is included because we say hein ubneim chasneim. So therefore, you have you have it, it's all set. You have the 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 man. His if you start from the man, you say his brother's son-in-law. So that's covered. Now you had the next case where you had the person, you had a father-in-law, you had the father-in-law's brother and the father-in-law's son. But the Mishnah says the brother of your father's son-in-law is covered. So how? So therefore, I start from the son. I go up to the father. 
So then the, the brother of the father is one step over and his son-in-law is back to Rav Sheshev, right? Okay, third case works the same way that we say, how do you know, uh, I'm sorry, um, so now the, the next case that Rishesh is asked about is the son of the sister of the father-in-law. So you have the person, you have the father-in-law, you have the sister of the father-in-law, you have the son, right? So now our Mishnah said the brother of a mother's son-in-law. So therefore, the person has a mother who has a brother who's the father-in-law, and his son-in-law is included. So we're back to Rishesh. So again, we're learning that that uh, that all of these cases that Rishesh is asked about Ula answered him, we're in fact covered in our Mishnah. If you followed all that, I'm very impressed. Okay. Rav Ikla Lemizben Gvili. So Rav went to buy Gvili, or uh, scrolls, Klafim, Rashi says. So therefore, um, Rav went to buy Klafim. Boimine, Mao Sheyayid Adam Be'eshes Cargo. Can someone testify about the wife of his stepson okay so you have a man and he's married to a woman let's say who had a son that's his stepson his stepson's wife we're inquiring about now rashi points out why is this question specifically by a stepson because as follows rashi says if you remember a stepson was the one person in our mishnah whose son was not considered a karo right so Normally, we say hein, ubneyen, vechosneyen, right? So if we're talking about any other prohibited relationship, and I ask about that prohibited relationship's uh, wife, the problem is, let's say I'm talking about my uncle, right? And I ask, can I testify about my uncle's, well, that actually is covered, but in order to take any of the primary cases and say his wife, the reason I can't is because the, I know that I can't testify about his wife. Why? Because since I'm not allowed to, in other words, if you're talking about the principal's wife, since I know that I'm not allowed to testify about the principal's son, because it's hein ubeneyem v'chosneyem, so principal and son I can't testify about, so then I for sure can't testify about the principal's wife. Why? Because who is going to inherit the wife? The son, right? And if the son I can't testify about. So if I testify about the wife to say that she's entitled to money, I'm helping someone who is, who is who's a karok to me because the the principal's son who stands to inherit the principal's wife is is a karok to me so of course i can't testify about the principal's wife if it's going to help the principal's son right so now but cargo a, a stepson is the one exception to this why because we said a stepson's son is not a karok so i'm allowed to testify about something that benefits the stepson's son so now the question arises that they were asking that they were asking Rav. Now they were asking Rav, can I can someone testify about his stepson's wife? Is that considered a karov or not? So Basura Amri Balki Ishto Amri I don't know, maybe it was PC. So they said it two ways. One said a husband is like a wife, and the other is one said a woman is like a husband. Um but in any event, the, the point is the same to say as follows. The way the way they understand this is, is I don't know why, I, theoretically, I think you would be able to say that, that that the wife of the principal is just like the principal, but instead the way the Mepharshim understand it is saying that the, the, the man is married to a woman. The stepson is her son, right? But since the mar- man is married to the woman, he's like the woman. So it's as if it's his son. It's as if his stepson is his son, and therefore... The, the, the wife of the stepson, who's really like a son, is going to be a daughter-in-law. And the daughter-in-law, you can't testify about. So therefore, they learn that that is not, you cannot testify even about the wife of a stepson. The Amr of Huna Amarav, uh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, the Amr of Huna Amarav, Minayan uh, Sha'isha Kibayla, we see something similar where it discusses, so we just finished saying that in Pumbadis and Surah, they said a husband and wife are equal. So now, Rav Huna says in the name of Rav, a, 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 a scriptural source for this, a pasuk. The pasuk says, "You should not uncover the erva of the brother of your father. Who is that? Your uncle. El ishto Don't come close to his wife. Dodaschahi. She is your aunt. But the question the the Gemara has is, Vahalo eshes dodohi. Hold on. She's not your aunt. She is your uncle's wife." Which is not the same as an aunt. 
So why are you saying the wife of your father's brother is your aunt? It's your uncle's wife. Miklal, the Isha Kabbalah. So you see from the fact that the Pasuk calls her your aunt, even though she's just the wife of your uncle, is to tell you that a woman that a woman and man, when they're married, are like one unit for purposes of these relationships. Okay. Ubal imo hu ubno uchosno. So we say that a uh, if someone, the husband of someone's mother, so that's a stepfather, hu ubno uchosno. So we say, uh, but the question we have is as follows: that bno hainu echov. So the way the Gemara, the way the Gemara understands this is as follows: that um, that you have a man. Uh, 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 I'm sorry. Um, Okay, so the question is as follows: You have a, you have a mother and a father who gave birth to someone, right? And now, now the mother married. Uh, 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 I'm sorry, the mother married a new husband and had a son, right? So what we're saying is that that son. Uh, so these two people are now half brothers because they share a mother, right? So the question is, why did you need to come tell me that the son of the of the uh, stepfather with his mother? That and there's that that is a karov. We already know that because it says a brother is a karov, and so this person is a half brother because they share a mother. So what? Why did the Mishnah need to come to tell me the son of this, uh, the, the 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 stepson, the son of his mother's husband, the son of his mother's husband? So the Gemara says, "Amr no." You're right. A half brother, I would know from the fact that it says brother, because a half brother is a brother. What did I need it to tell me the son of the stepfather? So he's coming to tell you, he's coming to tell you the brother of a brother. So how does this look? As follows. You have someone who has a, a father and a mother. He's born, right? His mother goes and marries a man. They have a son together, right? So we have a first son. We now have a half brother for him. That brother's father had been married to another woman and had another child, right? So you have you have a, a you have two sons on either end who do not share a parent and you have one son in the middle who shares a parent with each of them so you have a half brother's half brother so Rabbi says that's the case the mission is coming to teach us that if you're if a person has a half brother's half brother then that also is considered too close according to Rabbi and their Akaro. so now um but uh, but Rav Chista was faced with the case of a brother's brother, meaning a half brother's half brother, and Amri lay, and, and he said as kosher that they're allowed to testify about against, about each other. They're not krovim. Amri lay, they said to him l'shmiyalach hadr of Yermia. You didn't hear this. Rav Yermia said that a half brother's half brother is karov. Amri lehu l'shmiyali. I never heard it, but the Gemara says what he really meant is kolomar l'svirli. I don't agree with it. So then the Gemara says, well then I'll go back to my question. Ihachi hainu achiv. If you're telling me we're just talking about a case of a regular half brother, where a guy was born to his mother, and then his mother got remarried and uh, to a man, and together with that man, she had a they had a son who's his half brother. So then that's the same as brother. So why did the mission need to do a second case? So the Gemara says, No, it was coming to tell me that his brother from his father, and it was coming to tell me his brother from his mother. Those are two separate cases, and that's why the mission lists them both. Okay. Amr of Chister. Chister says something very interesting. This relates to something Zalman was mentioning to me yesterday, which Gemara says, uh, or the day before, Avi Chasan Avi Kala Me'idin Zalzeh. The father of a bride and the father of a groom can testify about, e- about each other, more commonly known as Mechutanim. So Mechutanim can testify about each other. Blodomu Adadi, they're not considered related to each other. Ela Ki Achla Ladana. So they're like a, uh, the way Rashi understands it is like a, a barrel with a cover that doesn't fit. It's the wrong shape. I don't know. You could judge whatever you want from that. The Aruch, the Messiah Sashas brings the Aruch that says it's a case of a barrel where the cover is the right cover, but it doesn't, it doesn't stick to it. It just sits on top. So uh, again, interpret it how you will. Um, but basically, Mechotanim are not pasolades for each other. Amar Avarachana made Adam Ishto Arusa. That the, a man can testify about a woman with whom he's done erison. So a man does kiddushin and then later does nisuin. Let's say he does kiddushin. So he's married to this woman. She's usher to anyone else, but they've not done nisuin yet. So the, the halacha that they're passing here is that he can testify about her. Now the Gemara says, I'm Ravina. Ravina qualifies. That said, lo So he says, when is that true that a guy can testify about the woman to, with whom he's done erison is only if he's 
testifying against her and he's taking away money from her. But if he's giving her money, he can't testify. Why? Because what's going to happen? He's going to he's going to testify that she's owed a million dollars. Now he's engaged her or whatever, heiress into her. Then they're going to do Nisuin. He's going to get the million dollars. So therefore, he's no Gebedavr. So Ravina says, when do I say that a man can testify about his Aros? It's only to, to hurt her, not to give her something. So the Gemara says, below he, it's not even true. A man cannot testify about his Arusa. Why? Uh, below he, it doesn't matter whether he's hurting her or helping her. Why is uh, he's not believed? Now the Gemara says, and why do I say he's not believed? Because why would you say he is believed? What's your thought that he's believed? Is it because Kedam Rechia Barami Mishmei the Ula, this is Rukhi Barami said in the name of Ula. What did Rukhi Barami say in the name of Ula? Ishto Arusa, if someone is 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 has done Arison with a woman, lo onain velomatamila. That he's not an onain, as Rashi points out, onain has consequences for uh in Mesa and Inasa Bakachim Mahmas Aninas. Normally a person when his wife dies becomes Asr and Kachim. But if a man's uh, uh Arusa dies, he's not Asr and Kachim. Matamela, if he's a Kohen, a Kohen has to be Matame to his wife, but if it's his wife, only by Arison, he's not Matame to her. The Chain he, and similarly he, Lo Onenes, that if her, if, if a man did Arison with her and then he died, she's not an Onenes. Matamela, and she doesn't have to be Matame to him. And so Rashi spends a lot of time talking about what's his issue because we know that a Bas Kohen or an Ashish Kohen is allowed to be Matame. So what he, the Rashi learns that, that really what it is is saying that. That a woman, uh, that, that any person, for their seven close relatives, we force them to be matame them. They can't. Per, a person who's not a coin can't say, "I don't want to become tame." They have to become tame. But we don't force. We don't force her to become tame for the man who had done erison with her. Okay. So Mesa, if she dies, ain't no yarsha. He doesn't inherit her. The fact that he did erison with her doesn't make her the, the inheritor. Mace who? What happens if he died? Go back subasa. Then she actually collects the ksuba. But why? Because normally a ksuba is only given by Nesuin. If this guy chose to give a ksuba by Arison, it showed that he wanted to give a ksuba to his wife, even if she was only his wife from Arison. But what do you see? You see that in basically all cases, unless he did something explicitly to show that he wanted his Arusa to be treated like a full-fledged wife, and Arusa is not a full-fledged wife. So the Gemara is saying, maybe you're going to tell me that's the reason you thought that a man can testify about his Arusa wife, because you see that they don't become a, a an owning for each other and they don't become tummy for each other but but that's not a good reason because hasam b'she'ero talarachmana akati la she'rohi he's saying no because over there what what's the relative what's the relevant measure both by yerusha and by becoming tummy it says she'ero hakarav law the 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 the, the flesh oh. that is next to each other and it says the hayu lebaser echad is talking about man and wife so when the halachas of inheritance and tumah are tied to being she'er or basar, right? So who does that apply to? That applies only to a married couple because we say a man and his wife are v'hayul basar echad. So that's why by Yerusha and tumah it needs to be it needs to be an actual fully married nesuin marriage. But here by testimony, but, but the question by testimony is not whether you're the same flesh, but whether you're 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 conflicted because you're too close to each other. When a man does Arison with a wife, a guy he's planning to eventually do Nusuin with, he feels close to her. So therefore, you're wrong if you thought just because a man does not become an onane to his Arusa that therefore he could testify about her. The, 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 the relevant criteria for testimony and the relevant criteria for uh, inheritance or 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 tuma are totally different. One is share, and the other is 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 feeling a uh, feeling of closeness. Okay, chorgo levado. All right. So we said we listed ten things in the Mishnah, and we said all of them are them and their son and their son-in-law, except for a stepson. The stepson is the one exception. Toner abanon chorgo levado. The the stepson stands alone is an exception. Rabbi Yossi Omer Giso. Rabbi Yossi says a brother-in-law. Betanya, we learned another bris. So we don't know what this means yet. By the way, we'll see in a minute. Betanya, the bri- another bris that says Betanya idoch. Another bris that says Giso levado. No, it's a brother-in-law who's by himself. Rabbi Yehuda Amar Chargo. Rabbi Yehuda says stepson. Right. So we have one who says Chargo, and Rabbi Yossi adds Giso. We have one who says Giso, and Rabbi Yehuda adds Chargo. So now the Gemara asks, my kamer, what, what's going on here with these brises? Ilema hachi kamer. If you're saying that it says follows, take the first bris. Chargo levado. That Rabbi Yehuda, who's the Tanakama of the first Brisa, says 
that a stepson is by himself, and so too his brother-in-law, but he didn't mention the brother-in-law, he only mentioned the stepson. But also Rabbi Yossi Lameimar says, and Rabbi Yossi comes to say, Giso Levado, Vuhu Adin Lechargo. That, no, uh, I agree with you, but I want to speak out that not only is it is it his stepson, but also his brother-in-law. So how would this be understood? That, that Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi Yossi are coming, they're both agreeing with each other, that both a son-in-law, uh, I'm sorry, both a stepson and a brother-in-law do not have Hain Ubneim V'chosneim, right? So we're saying that both Rabbi, uh, Rabbi Yossi and Rabbi Yehuda agree that there's eight categories that have their sons and their sons-in-law. And there's two categories that are just them, not their sons and their son-in-law. So the Gemara says, Bela Masnisim the Katani Gisohu B'no no money. So he says, but if you're telling me that both Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi Yossi agree that, that, that both a son-in-law and a, uh, both a brother-in-law and a stepson are by themselves, then who our mission doesn't work because our mission lists nine people that says it includes a son and son-in-law, and the only one it says does not include a son and son-in-law is the stepson. But it, it does include it's by but by a by a brother-in-law it says him and his son and his son-in-law. So therefore, our Mishnah would come out not like Rabbi Yossi or Rabbi Yehuda. So we can't understand that they're all in agreement. So So rather, we'll say that they're arguing with each other. So this is Rabbi Yehuda. We would say that Rabbi Yehuda is saying that the stepson is by himself without his son or son-in-law, but a brother-in-law is there with his son and son-in-law. That works with our Mishnah. Well, that's Rabbi Yossi Lameimer. Rabbi Yossi is coming to say, He's saying, no, I disagree with you. It's not the stepson who's by himself. It's the brother-in-law who's by himself. The stepson includes his son and his son-in-law. But now we have a problem. So the first way we were saying is that both of them agree that a stepson and a brother-in-law are excluded. But we had a problem because our mission only excludes a, a, a stepson. It doesn't exclude a brother-in-law. So we're saying, okay, fine. So they're not agreeing with each other. They're arguing with each other. So they would each hold that nine of them are... Uh, nine of them are include their sons and son-in-law, and the tenth one doesn't. And they argue whether that tenth one is a brother-in-law or a stepson. So now it works with our Mishnah, because our Mishnah also said nine and only excluded a, bro- a, a stepson. So it would be la halacha would be like Rabbi Yehuda. But what's the problem with that? The Gemara says that this that we learned Rabbi which we learned before Shmona Avos. There are eight principles, Shane Esen Rabbo, which are twenty-four. So Kiman look Rabbi Yosef look Rabbi Yehuda because if we say that both and remember I told you before that the Rabbi Chia said there are eight principles and I said I there's ten so now the Gemara is asking this question because they're saying if you say that both Rabbi Yosi and Rabbi Yehuda agree that there's nine who include their son and son and only one who doesn't then how many principles are there that include their sons and son in law nine so then you should say and Rabbi Chia, instead of saying twenty four should have said nine principles and their sons and their son in law is twenty seven. So it comes out that if both Rabbi, if both Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi Yossi hold nine, then Rabbi Chia's brisa doesn't work. So Elahachi comes. So rather, this is how we'll learn it: that Chorgo Levado Avogiso Hu Bno Chosno. That Rabbi Yehuda says a stepson is by himself; it does not include a son or stepson, but a brother-in-law includes a son or a stepson. So who is that like? That Rabbi Yehuda is like our Mishnah, which says the only one who stands alone is Chorgo. But also Rabbi Yossi, the Meimer Rabbi Yossi says Giso Levado Vekosha King Chorgo. Then no, the Rabbi Yossi says both a brother-in-law and a stepson exclude their son and son-in-law. So how many principles does he have? Eight. So now we're going to say, Umas Nisin, Rabbi Yehuda. So therefore, our Mishnah works well with Rabbi Yehuda because Rabbi Yehuda is the one who says nine of them include their sons and son-in-law, it's only their stepson not. And Rabbi, Chia works, and, and, and Rabbi Yossi, who says that both a stepson and a brother-in-law are excluded from being principles whose sons and sons-in-law are included, work well with Reb Chia because now there's only eight principles. And Reb Chia said there's eight. You add the sons and the sons-in-law, you have 24. And that's why Reb Chia referenced eight because there's eight who are principles that include their sons and sons-in-law. There happens to be two others, but it's them, only them by themselves. Okay. Um, I'm Reb Yehuda, I'm Shmuel. Reb Yehuda says the name of Shmuel, Halacha Reb Yossi. The halacha is like Reb Yossi. The way the Mishnah is understanding this is actually not the Rabbi Yossi we were just talking about, but Rabbi Yossi and the Mishnah. If you remember, Rabbi Yossi and the Mishnah, Rabbi Yossi came and said, this is the halacha when you describe all these relatives who are too close to each other. That's the halacha of Rabbi Akiva. But the Mishnah Rishona, the earlier Mishnah, tied it to Yerusha, right? So we're understanding that that's what the Gemara is saying, that the halacha is like Rabbi Yossi in the Mishnah, and therefore it's tied to, uh, to, to um, it's, it's, it's tied to Yerusha. 
Uh, okay, so now it says a story. Hahimatanta, there was a gift. You had two brothers in law. So you had two people who were married to sisters. So they are brothers in law. And they had signed on a gift document, right? Okay, so the question is are they kosher edim or pasal edim? So the way we've been learning is that giso in our Mishnah is is uh, uh they're they're related they're krovim because that's one of the cases listed in our mishnah right so that would say that they are krovim and therefore this star is not a valid star but if you understand that that the kirvos that being uh, that being related too closely related to someone is tied to uh is tied to uh yerusha brothers-in-law husbands of two sisters never inherit each other because their wives don't inherit them and therefore, their sister won't inherit them to be able to get to the brother. So then, therefore, according to the laws of Yerusha, bro- brothers-in-law, meaning two people who are married to sisters, are not are not related to each other for purposes of Yerusha. And therefore, this would be a valid gift document. So the question is, if you have if you have two brothers-in-law who signed on a document, it makes a big difference whether we look at Yerusha or we look at our Mishnah. So the Gemara says, Savar Rav Yosef Lachshure, the Amr Rav Yehuda Amr Shmuel Halacha Rav Yosef. So Rav Yosef. Rabbi Yosef was looking at this and wanted to say that this is a valid gift document, even though it's signed like brothers by brothers in law, because we said that Allah is like Rabbi Yosef. And Rabbi Yosef in the Mishnah said it's tied to Yerusha. Amalei Abaya, Abaya said to him, He might the Rabbi Yosef, the Masnis in the Maksha uh, Begiso, who said that it's talking about Rabbi Yosef in our Mishnah, who said it's tied to inheritance, and therefore brothers in law can testify. Dilma Rabbi Yosef, the Brisa. Maybe it's Rabbi Yosef of the Brisa, and Rabbi Yosef of the Brisa was coming to say, that a son-in-law and a stepson are stand alone in as much as their son and son-in-law aren't included. But what do you see? You see that even he includes the brother-in-law himself. So you see that even according, if you understand that when they're saying Allah is Rabbi Yossi, it's going on this Rabbi Yossi, Rabbi Yossi says even a brother-in-law, maybe he was saying that, that a brother-in-law is, is a car of impossible edas, the possible giso. Um, so the Gemara says, it, 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 you shouldn't think that he were coming to Paskin like Rabbi Yossi in the Brisa, it must be we're coming to Paskin like Rabbi Yossi in the Mishnah. Why? The Amr Shmuel, because Shmuel said, what's an example? Because because Shmuel had a brother named Pinchas. So these were two brothers who married two sisters. So therefore, Pinchas was both Shmuel's brother and his brother-in-law, because they were married to sisters. So what do you see? That when Shmuel was giving an example of Gisi, that it, 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 in the Brisa, he was talking about, he says, someone like me and Pinchas, which are both brothers and brothers in law. The implication from that, of a Gisi, the Amma, Shapir dummy. But uh, just a regular brother in law, meaning people who aren't brothers married to sisters, but just two men married to sisters, would be permitted. Those would not be Krovim. But so, so the Gemara says, uh, well, how do you know, how do you know that that's what Shmuel meant? Maybe Shmuel just meant, but Dilma could go on no Pinchas, Mishun de Giso Kamar. He was giving an example of brothers in law. But who said that he meant it has to be everything like me and me and Pinchas? It's true, me and Pinchas are both brothers and brothers in law, but I was just pointing to him as my brother in law. So you would say that when Ryosi says brothers in law are puzzle, it's talking about rather regular brothers in law. So I'm relay. So what happened? If you remember, we were in the middle of a story here that they had come in front of Rav Yosef, Rav Yosef with this star that was signed by brothers in law. And so the Rav Yosef originally wanted to say we pass him like Rav Yosef in the Mishnah. Now we show that maybe it's a pass him like Rav Yosef in the Brisa, in which case the star is puzzle. So Rav Yosef said, Zio Kanye be'edim misira to Rabbi Laza. So he said, you know what? You're right. So maybe when we say halacha to Rav Yosef, it's Rav Yosef in the Brisa. And therefore the star is puzzle. So the people who are trying to say, make the, the star of Matana be good, he says, sorry, I can't help you because it's signed by brothers-in-law, but I have a good idea for you. He says, I hold like Rebbe Lazar. And if you remember, Rebbe Lazar is the one who says, Edim Messir Akarti. That w- w- which are the important Edim? Remember, we dealt with this Machok is a lot. Is it, is it the Edim who sign on the star that are important? Or is it the Edim who watch the man give the star to the woman, right? Or any person give a star to the other person. So Rebbe Lazar is the one who says the, the, the important transaction is giving the star to the person. You can hand the star with no signatures in it, and that'll be a valid star as long as you. There are witnesses that he handed it over, right? So therefore, Rav Yosef said, I can't help you to say that brothers-in-law are allowed to testify because Allah has Rav Yosef, but I can help you by telling you, go find the people that were the Ede Mesira that saw you give it, that saw him give over the star that he's giving a gift, and then you'll be able to do it. Uh, so they said back to Rav Yosef, He said, when did Rav Yosef say 
that if you have witnesses who witnessed him hand over the star, that that is that that is okay, and you don't care about the people signing on the star. That's only if the star is blank or is signed by valid witnesses. But if the star itself is deficient because it's signed by invalid witnesses, i.e., brothers-in-law. So then the Ede Masira, what were they witnessing? They were witnessing him handing over a faulty star, a puzzle star. So if you say, yes, Rebbe Lazar would say, normally I tell you the important Edim are the ones who saw him hand over the star. But if you hand over a star that's puzzled because it has Krovim in it, then I don't say it. So therefore, so Amr Leis, Yosef went back to the guys who were trying to get the gift. He said, I tried to help you by saying brothers-in-law can sign, but I can't because Allah Rabbi Yosef in the Brisa. I tried to help you by saying, give it over like Rebbe Lazar, but I can't because the star is inherently deficient. Zeal, go away. They're not letting me give you the gift because uh, they've disproved um, everything. Uh, okay. You know what? We'll just we'll just go very quickly because tomorrow is a very long doc. Um, so we'll just finish up very quickly. Yehuda Amr. Amr of Tanchon, Amr of Tavla, Amr of Baruna, Amr of Halacha Rabbi Yehuda. The Halacha follows Rabbi Yehuda. This is going on the Mishnah. So the Mishnah, if you remember, said that it, that it only works if someone's related uh, to someone and they're still related. So for example, if you had a son-in-law whose wife died, died or got divorced, he's now no longer related to the father-in-law, right? And we said, therefore, the father-in-law can testify about him. Even though they used to be Krovin, they used to be relatives, they're no longer relatives because since his wife died or got divorced, he's no longer related to the, to the father-in-law. Rev Yehuda came and said on that, that's true, but if the son-in-law and the daughter had children, so now, even though the daughter died and the, the son-in-law is not necessarily related to his father-in-law, but at the end of the day, he's the father of his father-in-law's grandchildren. And that's still a connection. So therefore, he can't testify about him because the father of the father-in-law's grandchildren is a relationship. So now the Gemara says, the halacha is like Rabbi Yehuda. Rav Amr Rav Nachman, ain't halacha Rabbi Yehuda. The halacha is not like Rabbi Yehuda. The chen Amr Rav Bar Rachana, Amr Rabbi Yochanan, ain't halacha Rabbi Yehuda. That Rav Bar Rachana said the name of Rabbi Yochanan, halacha is not like Rabbi Yehuda. So, so he says that the halacha rather is that even if the son-in-law has children with the with the daughter, once the daughter dies or is divorced, then uh, the father-in-law and the son-in-law are not related. And others learned Rabbi Bar Rachana said uh, it on a different uh, a different thing, but same basic outcome. As Zu Darsh Rabbi Yosi Aglili, Rabbi Yosi Aglili Darsh the pasuk that says as follows: The pasuk tells us, that you should come. To the Kohanim, this is in the Varim. It says you should come to the Kohanim and the Levium and to the judges, the judge that's there in your day. Now the Gemara says, what kind of Pasuk is this? Can a person go to the judge that's not in his days? Can I go Can I go ask the Rambam what I should do? I can't. Of course, who, which judge am I going to go to? I'm going to go to the ones in my day. So why did the Pasuk need to say it? So when it's saying you should go to the one who's in your days, meaning you look at the judge in his days, meaning right now, and say, is are they related? But therefore, if people used to be related, if they used to be related, and then the, the person who connected them, for example, the wife of the son, dies, he's no longer related to the father-in-law. And therefore, the father-in-law can be his judge, because by Yom and Mahim, in those days, in those days, they're no longer related. Which means that when the when the connection link is severed, it doesn't matter whether there are children in the picture. So you see also a different way of, of Rabbi Barachana saying the halacha is not like Rabbi Yehuda. B'nei Chamur de Mar Ukva, the sons of the father-in-law of Mar Ukva. So basically, what's the sons of the father-in-law of Mar Ukva? Mar Ukva's uh, brothers-in-law. So Mar Ukva's father-in-law's sons, so his wife's father's sons, her his wife's brothers, Right, Krovim and Israhu Kuhabe, that they were brothers in law, but then what happened? Marukva's wife died. So now Marukva used to be related to them, but he's no longer related to them. Also, the Kami did Ladina. They came in front of Marukva for Dina. They came in front of Marukva and said, Be our judge. These were his former brothers in law. Amrlohu, he said, Pasona Luchulu Ladina. I'm puzzled for you to do this. Amrle, they said to him, My daita, Kreb Yehuda. Are you saying like Rabbi Yehuda? Because Rabbi Yehuda says, why do you think you're still related to us? Is it because you had children with our sister? We'll bring you a letter from, from my Rava from Eretz Yisrael saying that's paskening, not like Rabbi Yehuda. So you should be able to be a judge for us because once they're saying, once their sister died, their connection to Marokwa was severed and therefore Marokwa can be their judge. 
He says, am I, the way Rashi explains it, am I, am I attached to you with a cob of wax? I know that I'm not related to you anymore. Because my request said, when his wife died, I ceased to be related to these brothers-in-law. He says, I'm sorry, I'm He said, when I told you that I can't be your judge, it's not because I thought I'm related to you. I'm not. Because when, when Marukwa's wife died, that relationship was severed. But why would he not judge his brothers-in-law? Because he says, you don't respect me enough. You think I'm like your brother-in-law, and therefore you're not going to listen to whatever I pass him. And that's the reason I said you're puzzled. <laughs>